Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be going over uh, the beginner's notes for the monster Fu Yaku in the game Monster Hunter Rise. The purpose of these videos is to provide the beginner with some basic information about the large monsters in Monster Hunter Rise. I know that at the beginning when I first started this game, there was a lot of, in terms of a lot of trial and error, when I face the monsters to get used to like their move set, what they're, you know, what they're strong against, what they're weak against. So uh, hopefully this will provide the again the beginner with some information to get them started on their journey in Monster Hunter Rise. So let's start off with some information about Kuliyaku. So Kuliyaku is classified as a bird wyvern. And his first appearance was in Monster Hunter World, which was released, I believe, in 2018. One of the reasons I re kind of really like Kuluyaku uh, is that he's he's kind of silly. He's re he's really goofy with that egg thief act. So you know he he kind of grew on me as I played uh, Monster Hunter World more. So on to his information in the Hunter's Notes. As you can see here, he's been classified as threat level of two stars out of ten. Again, I don't, I don't want to call him a pushover, but he isn't the most challenging large monster in the game. Though early on, like where you, when your armor is relatively weak, you, he may pose a bit of a threat, but overall no, not too bad. Moving on to his physiology. As you can see, he's got four parts where you can attack. His head, his torso, his foreleg, and his tail. And of those four, I believe the only two parts that you can break are his head and his foreleg. His tail de definitely does not sever. So yeah, definitely focus on his head and his foreleg and break those parts to get extra material at the end of the match. And as you can see from this chart, there is a benefit to focusing on uh, attacks to his head as sharp weapons, legend weapons, as well as long range weapons all do a bit more damage to his head than the other parts of his body. Also, according to this chart, Kuliyaku is pretty much susceptible to all the elements, with water being a bit more effective against them. In terms of ailments, if you're going to bring uh, something to inflict upon him, focus on stun, blast, and water blight. Now that we're familiar with Kuliyaku's weaknesses, let's move on to his attack. We'll look at the different moves he uses, as well as some signals to keep an eye out for. These are based on my own observations and experiences, so if there's any additional information that you feel I should add, please let me know in the comment section below. Kuyaku essentially has what I call two different modes. Uh, he starts off fighting you barehanded, but then he gets all serious and arms himself with either a pot or a rock. So the pot or rock, it, it doesn't appear out of like thin air, right? So he's gonna go and dig for the, the rock and uh, he, he'll pull it out of the ground. Whether it's a pot or a rock, as far as I know, is random. Again, please let me know if that's not the case, but that's as far as I know. So whenever you see him uh, digging around on the ground, you know he'll be pulling out either one of these items. He will basically take take the pot and the rock uh, and use it as a weapon to attack as well as as a shield to block your attack. So some of the attacks will deflect off the rock, but the pot itself uh, is it's essentially useless. Your, your attacks will pretty much go through 100% of the time. So uh, in order to get, get rid of the rock, you'll either have to stagger him by attacking him or you can also use a flash and he will drop the rock and the pot. You also could continue to attack it and eventually the rock and the pot will break. The first move in Kuluyaku's arsenal is the simple forward swipe. Uh, in this move, Kuluyaku lunges forward and swipes at you with his forearm. I've seen this move cover varying distances, like he can sometimes he attacks, it goes a little further, or other times it's, it's a very short attack. But either way, if it, it doesn't cover a whole lot of distance, so if you are far enough, it's, it's not going to touch you. And even if it did, 
the damage is pretty insignificant so I, there's not a lot of worries about this one so the setup for this move is fairly slow and it's pretty easily detectable because Kulu has to stand upright before he's able to lunge forward at you so it is fairly easy to avoid this move The next move we will be looking at is what I refer to as the peck attack. So as the name implies, uh, Kuluyaku will be pecking downwards multiple, which I believe is four times uh, while moving forward. Again, this move doesn't cover a whole lot of distance, nor does it do a lot of damage, even if he were to land this on you. So once again, it's not anything to be worried about. So the signal that he's about to unleash the peck attack is that he pauses and stands upright, which again is similar to the forward swipe attack. Uh, also note that when Kulu Yaku does this move when he's tired, there is a chance that he, his beak will get stuck in the floor during his last peck. So when it's stuck it'll take a while for him to pull it out of the floor so this is an opening for you to like do massive damage on him moving on we have what i refer to as kulu's jump smash which in my opinion is probably the single most dangerous attack in his arsenal especially when he does this while holding a rock the movement to look out for to indicate that he is about to unleash this is that Kulu takes a hop back before lunging forward and attacking you and again if he is holding an item he will hit you with it. This move can be very dangerous when it lands especially when he is holding an item as it increases the chances of you being stunned as well as doing a significant amount of damage. Okay, so moving on, uh, there are several moves that Kuluyaku does only when he's armed and presumably dangerous. Some of these, such as the jump smash, we've mentioned before, but others we need to talk about separately. The first of these attacks is a straightforward rock smash, where Kuluyaku takes the rock or pot and literally smashes you over the head with it. While the attack doesn't take an insane amount of damage, uh, it's, it's still not fun to be clubbed over a head with a weapon, right? Uh, so next time you see him taking a step back with that rock, start dodging. Next move looks very similar to Kulu Yaku's jump smash attack. Basically, Kulu charges forward with a rock in hand, does a small hop, and smashes you over the head with the rock. The biggest distinguishing factor between the two moves is that he sticks fairly close to the ground for this move and it seems to come a little bit quicker but either way it's probably best not to get hit by this Kuluyaku may actually choose to throw the pot or the rock at you so it may be a good idea to either disarm him by breaking the rock or the pot or flashing him so he doesn't use it as a weapon either way whether it's throwing it at you or clubbing you over the head with it. So to end off this section about his moves, if you've noticed in the videos, uh, most of his attacks, in fact all of his attacks, attack forward. So he doesn't have any moves that attacks like for example a tail spin or the Lagambi where he can fall back and like sit on you if you're standing behind him. All his attacks are directed forward in front of him. So as long as you're careful when you're standing in front of him and attacking him and avoiding and dodging his moves when set, when you see the signs that he's setting up for it, uh, Kuluyaku should be a relatively easy fight. Alright, so that pretty much wraps up the discussion about Kuluyaku. I really hope this video will be able to help beginners with their first encounter with Kuluyaku. And I'll end this off with just some photos of one of the most important things about Monster Hunter. The fashion. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And remember to subscribe so that you can be notified for future videos. And as always, remember 
to enter the maelstrom. This is Kieran, signing off.